I'm going to talk about the radius and ulna and answer the questions, what are the radius and ulna bones, what are their primary bony landmarks, and what are some reasons to learn about them. Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Morton and I am the noted anatomist. To begin with, the radius and ulna form the principal bones of the forearm. They articulate proximally with the humerus at the elbow joint, with the primary articulation being with the ulna and humerus. And then distally, the radius and ulna articulate with the carpals or the wrist uh, bones. And the radius forms the dominant role of articulation with the wrist. Uh, these are the radial and the ulnar landmarks that, we're, that I'm going to cover in this tutorial. And let's start with the radius. The radius is the lateral bone of the forearm. And the way that I find that in surface anatomy is that someone says, hey, you are rad, and they give you the thumbs up. The radius is on the rad thumb side. So it doesn't matter how you move the wrist and forearm, you find the thumb, the radius, you find the radius. So in case of a patient or arm, it's easier to find if their arm's twisted. Anywho, next one is on the radius, what do we call this proximal landmark? And it's smooth and it's dome shaped at the top. I know, we'll call it the head of the radius, which forms a synovial pivot joint with the ulna. As we see in this illustration, look when you go pronation, supination, pronation, supination. And it's a lot easier to see actually when you do the surface anatomy as shown here. Um, and if we zoom in to see the head of the radius, it is anchored within the radius of the uh, ulna and the humerus by this joint capsule of dense collagenous connective tissue. And if I do a little step dissection, you see this one that's in uh, pink color or purple, if you will. Uh, it forms this annular ligaments, this one part of the joint capsule. And it gets its name because it forms a ring around that head and it keeps the head anchored into the ulna. I also show this articulophobia because that's the part that pushes up and articulates with the capitulum of the humerus. All right, there's the head of the radius. Now, this one, anatomist said, well, what do we call this part below the head? I know, the neck of the radius. And what about this one? It's a bump, it's a swelling on the radius. I know, we'll call it the radial tuberosity for bump tuberosity on the radius. And it has a special uh, function because the uh, radial tuberosity serves as the insertion for the biceps brachii muscle. Next is this one. Anatomist said, what do we call this thing that looks like the tip of a pen? I know, we'll call it the tip of a pen, the styloid process. And the styloid process serves as an attachment for the brachioradialis muscle. Next is there is this crest on the radius and actually on the ulna as well between these two bones. And so they called this the interosseous crest between the osseous, the bones, this crest, which serves as the attachment for the interosseous membrane. And this interosseous membrane tethers and bridges and knits the radius and ulna together, making this syndesmosis fibrous joint. And if we take a cross section through the forearm like this, and focus in this area, there's the radius and ulna, and that is the interosseous membrane that's between the two. And so anatomists use this landmark to describe, uh, it, okay, this interosseous membrane bridges these two bones together, but it also is used for naming structures like the anterior interosseous and posterior interosseous arteries and nerves in their relation to in front of or behind this membrane. Now let's go to the ulna. Now the ulna is the medial bone of the forearm and I like to identify the ulna because the proximal part looks like a U and if you look laterally, hey, it's a U, U for ulna. And this proximal process is the part that forms the elbow. So in Greek, elbow and process become olecranon process or the head of the elbow is what it comes out to be. And the olecranon process is an attachment part for the triceps brachii. In a sense, it's the insertion for the triceps brachii. And in landmark, it's that bony prominence that you rest your elbows against the desk. Next is this process that anatomists said looked like a hook. And because it looked like a hook, that's the word coronoid, so they called it the coronoid process. And the coronoid process serves as an insertion for the brachialis muscle that helps to flex the elbow. This one, is anatomist said, well, what do we call this notch? 
and this notch articulates with the trochlea on the humerus, so we'll call it the trochlear notch. And if we look at a lateral view of the right elbow and blow it up, there is the trochlea of the humerus and there is the trochlear notch of the ulna. And they come back together again and that's where we get this uh, flexion, extension, flexion, extension. And when you then go to the extension, the olecranon process prevents hyperextension as it goes, that uh, olecranon process kind of goes snug as a bug in a rug into the olecranon fossa on the back of the humerus. Okay, now let's do it again, except we're going to blow up from an anterior view that there is the trochlea, which articulates with the trochlear notch on the ulna, and there's the capitulum, which then articulates with the radial head. All right. Then this one down at the bottom, they said this is the rounded portion of the distal ulna. I know, we'll call it the ulnar head or head of the ulna. And this is what allows, there's the head of the ulna, and this is where the distal radius pivots during pronation and supination, and pronation and supination where that synovial pivot joint occurs. And to see it in surface anatomy, we actually need to pronate, and there is that head of the ulna, the ulnar head. And this last one, it's a it's this uh, pointy process. Anatomist said, hey, it looks like the tip of a pen. We'll call it the styloid process of the ulna. And this is where um, ligaments, say, the, uh, for example, the ulnar collateral ligament of the wrist and the radial ulnar ligaments attach to the styloid process. Don't forget that there's also a styloid process of the radius and the styloid process of the temporal bone. All of them look pointed like. Let's do a little bit of review. I'm going to then give a question and then I'm going to go immediately into the answer. So if you want to test yourself, just press the space bar to pause or just press pause on your phone. All right, so first thing is this, what bone is that? Well, it's on the medial side, so that is the ulnar bone. What about this? What is that bony landmark? Well, that's the radius and it's proximal, it's a bumper swelling. That's the radial tuberosity where the biceps inserts. What about this one? Well, that's on the ulna because it's the other bone and it's the hook-like process. That's the coronoid process. That's where our brachialis attaches. What about this? Oh, that's the proximal smooth dome, you know, round portion of the radius. That's the head of the radius, the pivot synovial joint. What about this uh, landmark right there? Oh, that's that notch of the proximal ulna. That's in the trochlear notch. That's the trochlear notch because it articulates with the trochlea of the humerus. Uh, what about what bone is this right here? Well, it's along the pinky side, and I can see the thumb side, and it's not along the thumb side, so that's the ulna. What about this one? Well, that's a pointy process on the radius, so that's the styloid process of the radius. And what about this thing here? Well, that's that... The, the larger um, superior portion of the trochlear notch, it's a process, that's the olecranon process. And that, my friends, is the radius and ulna in a nutshell. Mm -hmm.